There are currently three large banks in Iceland. Iceland's oldest bank, Landsbankin, is almost entirely owned by the government, which currently holds about 98.2% of the bank's shares. Islandsbanki, formerly known as Glitnir, is owned 100% by the government. Arianbanki is the most heavily under private ownership, as the government only owns 13% of the bank's shares. That means that the government's share in Iceland's large banks is around 70%. However, when taking into consideration the few smaller banks in the country, out of which uh, only one is owned in large part by the government, one must assume that the government's entire share in the country's banking system is somewhere in the ballpark of 65%. There are very few countries, if any, in Europe where the government is as involved in its country's banking sector. In fact, according to Minister of Finance Bjarni Benediktsson, one would have to look towards countries such as China or North Korea to find national governments that are as invested in the country's financial assets. We should have also thrown Venezuela in there for good measure. Personally, I think Bjartni is probably exaggerating a bit, however, I'm going to have to assume that it is most likely unusual, especially for a free market society, to have its government be the largest shareholder of institutions that are commonly seen as the very harbingers of free market capitalism. But then again, Iceland is basically a socialist country, having been run by socialist governments throughout most of its modern history. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Icelandic government is expecting its biggest budget deficits in its entire history for the year 2021, a situation echoed for most countries around the globe. And currently, the government is moving to sell a part of its shares in Islandsbanki in order to raise some much-needed capital. Even if Katrin Jakobsdottir's government were to sell a quarter of its shares in Islandsbanki, the government would still be in ownership of around 59% of, of all of the country's banks. However, the government is planning to most likely go further with the sale of more shares in Islandsbanki later on, and this has resulted in some backlash. Now obviously 2021 is an election year in Iceland, there's going to be a parliamentary election on uh, September 25th this year, and of course how much the government is eventually going to sell off of Eastlands Monkey is largely going to depend on who is in power in, after that election, so we're going to have to see about that. So according to a study on this subject made by Center Ransognir, a full majority of around 60% of our respondents say that they were opposed to the government selling uh, any share, uh, more shares in uh, the country's banks. In fact, if my math is correct, around 23% of responders said that, they, that the government should own more shares in the banking sector or even nationalize all of the banks entirely. Even 40% of the voters of Bjarni Ben's own party, the Independence Party, said that they were opposed to the government selling any more shares. And keep in mind, these are conservative voters we're talking about. In other words, 4 out of every 10 Icelandic conservative voters don't want the government to sell any more shares in a government-owned bank onto the private markets. 
Well, this might be a very strange statistical fact if you look at it from an outsider's perspective, but if you look at it from a Icelandic point of view, then things start to make a lot more sense. Ever since the first Icelandic bank started operating in 1886, it has been the norm that the government be very involved in the country's financial institutions. However, during the 13 years when David Otson was Prime Minister, the Icelandic government started to loosen its tight grip on the country's economy, and in 2003, Iceland's three largest banks were all privatized. Five years later, they were all bankrupt. In just five years, the private market had managed to do something that 130 years of government ownership had never managed. To completely collapse its entire banking sector. And as much as the most die-hard preachers of David Otson economics try to ignore recent history, the fact remains that privately owned banks in Iceland have had an abysmal rate of failure. Aside from the obvious crash of 2008, there were also the bankruptcies of Islandsbanki, the elder, in 1930, as well as the bankruptcy of its successor, Utvegsbanki, in 1987. Now, I myself am not opposed to the idea of the government selling, say, 25% of its shares in uh, Islands Banki to raise some much-needed funds in order to fight the COVID-19 economic depression. However, I still think that in lieu of, uh, of history and how the private sector has handled Icelandic banking and also seeing just how willing the Icelandic voters are to not let the government let go of these institutions, it is my opinion that the government should never own less than, say, just around 50% of, uh, of our country's banks. That, I think, is the very fair, decent minimum. Thank you very much for watching this video, and for the daily video, and like it, and so on, and I just want to see that you have the best and best. I have a very strange predic predicament. Predicament? Is that the word? Yeah, my room is very warm. I have a nice warm heater here behind me. But the floor is fucking freezing. I don't get it. It's like my house was built on top of a glacier or something. Like, I'm always... My toes are constantly cold, but the rest of me is sweating. Do you just